Welcome to Center of Light, all my Yanavites. I'm starting to collect the tribe again. After I went to this amazing social tailspin, I'm getting my second win. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Forgive me, I cannot post to YouTube tonight something about you've exceeded your quota, whatever that means. I didn't. It's some sort of technical glitch between the conversation of my software and YouTube. Hello everyone, tonight we're speaking about Center of Light Possibilities. 20 questions. I was looking for a topic tonight, and so I got on Googlage <laughs> and put spiritual, spiritual topics in. And it gave me a list of 20 spiritual questions for the young spiritualists. I thought it was pretty freaking cool. Uh, very good questions, mind you. Welcome everyone, uh, I just posted a link into the forum for my bestseller, Homecoming Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. New bestseller as of a couple months ago. If you already purchased the book and read it right now, be the same uh, great time to use the same link and go to Amazon and give me a review. Uh, but I will be taking questions from you guys as well uh, throughout the presentation tonight. I'm coming back. I'm coming back strong. So what took place was needed. Somewhat. <laughs> so it's good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Uh, also, heads up for everyone, uh, share this everywhere, please. To share, if you, if you feel it. And if it's a matter of motion or mechanic, it's just click, click, done. Christmas special. Use that same link. Purchase a copy of Homecoming, Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. I will give you an online copy of the Lavender Soul first album for free. Hello, Melinda. Hello, Carolyn. Purchase two copies for Christmas. They make great Christmas gifts. I'll give you the first and second album of Lavender Soul online for free. Purchase three Homecoming Crossing the Bridge to the Soul books, my bestseller. They make great, great Christmas gifts, the book and the music. I will give you all three Lavender Soul albums for free. And all that is required is you contact me. Let me grab the information. I'm just going to drop the whole lot right there. Here's the information. Contact me at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. Let me know of your purchase and what you did so I can send you the albums you are due. And that'll be done. Welcome to Center of Light. Tonight we're going to ask some questions. And hopefully I'm going to get as clear as possible. Boy, this thing's got some weight. But when we get clear for real, there is no more weight. And no more waiting. I'm kind of lost in between realms right now. Uh, I'm going to do a song. I'm going to come back and get right on in there. I, I'm just not here in the chair yet. In this chair yet. People say... What is this guy with the throne? It is not a throne, nor was it ever intended to be a throne. Hello, Kelly Curtis. Something happened with YouTube tonight, Kelly Curtis. I don't know why. This was never intended to be a throne with deity flowers. I like flowers, so I'll put flowers up. That's a headboard and a footboard. So I said, I need a prop. I had to move into this apartment quickly because of COVID. I needed a prop. So I grabbed some material this headboard and footboard put some salt lamps and everybody's gone <laughs> Kelly says YouTube isn't working maybe it's a YouTube issue and not my software with YouTube so I'm glad you're here I'm playing live in the soul song I'm gonna be right back compose myself get myself together um, how about perfect in every way it never gets old for me it's always brand new see you shortly welcome out share this everywhere Better way. 
Hello everyone, welcome to Center of Light. Good to see you tonight at Center of Light Possibilities. 20 questions I found on the internet. I was looking for a topic tonight. I've done every topic and spiritual history that can ever be done, at least I think. <laughs> so I got on Google and I looked up spiritual topics, spiritual questions. And I found some really good questions, all in one website. 20 questions for the aspiring spiritualist. I was like, wow, these are really good questions. So I'm going to attempt to get inside and bring forth what I would call wisdom. It's not an arrogant, egoistic stroke. It's the answers that come through on some level when I rewind my work and listen to it, which I always do. Because parts of me don't hear what comes through. I would say, that's a pretty cool answer. Be it, be it come from me, anybody else. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But my aim is to be focused. So I can bring forth some very cool, fun answers to such beautiful questions. Elaine said, hey, Keith, it's good to see you back. It's always good to see you. I just quoted to Elaine, a part of me died recently. My cat wants her attention and she's going to get it. Here you go, babe. Come say hi to these people. 
Let me see how these people. Everybody, this is Crystal. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> so a part of me died. It needed to. Is anyone else experiencing no sound? All of my software is correct. If you're experiencing sounds, give me an exclamation point. What, at least one of you. Kelly says no sound. Kelly, try refreshing your browser or your phone and come back in the room. <clears throat> Anyone experiencing no sound? Mel Melinda says good here. Okay. Kelly, just refresh and come back in. So tonight is 20 questions. Oh, I was saying that a part of me died. It needed to. New things because of or being birthed. I got rid of a lot of weight. You know what the weight is? Let me tell you what the weight is. I'm fixing something is caught. Excuse me. I'm just fidgeting tonight. There we go. No, <laughs> there we don't go. All right, so a part of me died. It needed to. Let me tell you what the weight was. Almost 5,000 people on my social media platform with only a sliver of that pie ever being used. I'm not calling people weight. I'm calling my attachment to just having this sort of volume weight. And many of you, if you are here, trust me. If you are here with me, you are so special to me. I took the time to seek you out. I did. Right now I have 250, give or take, people on my social media post platform. I came and found you. You came across not my mind, my heart. I didn't just start friending people everywhere. Some people, it took me a while. Like Elaine Leonard, took me a while. Some people by the name of Joe Smith, you can imagine how long that actually took me. So I had to find other people that I know that knew Joe Smith with strange names so I could find Joe Smith. When your name is so common, you get lost in the shuffle. <laughs> Claudia took me a while. Uh, in fact, I can't remember everyone's, I can remember Claudia, but I couldn't remember her last name. So today, how I found Claudia recently was I went back to old videos like you see right here, all this stuff, to find who these people are to me, to seek them out by spelling their name correctly. So tonight is Center of Light Possibilities. 20 questions, please share this everywhere. All right, let's get down to some beeswax. 20 questions I found on Google. Spiritual topics, subjects. 20 good questions. And it was one of the first possibi possibilities, sort of like possibilities, that came up. And the 20 questions for the aspiring spirituals are pretty freaking phenomenal. Let's begin. Number one. Questions for every spiritual seeker. <laughs> this is phenomenal. This reminds me of writing my first bestseller, The Divine Principle, when I chose to play the mouthpiece for humanity to ask questions that I thought were important to all of us. This is what these questions remind me of. Question number one. I'm making you wait. <laughs> why is there poverty? Why is there poverty and suffering in the world? Phenomenal question. But the question becomes who really wants to know? Quote the answer. <clears throat> Why is there hunger, 
suffering this, that, and the world. Because. Sounds vague? Good. It's open-ended. Look for that answer yourself. If that subject means anything to you at all. Who else can provide you with the most powerful answer other than you? Why is there hunger and suffering in the world? Is it possible that if we all choose to come down here, choose our parents, our region, our zone, our city, our family, God said, John Doe, Jill Doe, there's an opening. Would you like to go down to earth and play the suffering card only to, to be the facilitators of compassion? And everyone in the universe said, please choose me. And the first two hands that went up was John and Jill. And God says, John and Jill, step forward. Jump to the swirling vortex. Have a good time. So you see, many of us focus on the suffering and the hunger versus the masters that were hungry to come down to the earth to show us the compassion to say, I am here as a reflection of what is broken in the world. But what makes them first candidates or selectees is karma. Some people were selected, go complete your karma. And some people say, I want to go back to complete my karma. Ah, what greater way than I can, I can do that than live in a third world country. However long I live, be it to the age of 10, 12, 15, 30 if you're lucky, depending on how th third world your country is, will solve your cosmic riddle. Because once you complete with this life, maybe the end of it all is done for you. Completely done. I will tell you the reason hunger and illness and children suffering is simply because when people be who they are now in the past and forevermore there will always be that will be the cause but there will always be the effect an effect because it is happening So you're saying that on another level, these children are okay and I really don't need to give a squat? The give a squat is not about the children. Are you listening? The love and compassion you have for other children who may be suffering and or hungry is not about them. They are whole and complete in said suffering. They are a child of God just like we are. Guess who the lesson is for? opens up a new center of light possibility, doesn't it? That you, me, the we of it all, are so loved beyond measure that souls are willing to come to earth to show us that very lesson. Think about that. Feel about that. Be about that. Do about that. Live about that. Be exemplary about that. In other words, don't let this opportunity of all of us being here go in vain by said masters of God coming down to teach us about compassion for hungry and suffering people, period. That is question number one in 20 questions of spirituality for the aspirant I found on Google today. Hello, Beth. Welcome back. No, welcome me back, Beth. I disappeared into the rabbit hole. Elaine says, yes, yes, yes. 
Elaine, everyone, I, I suggest you follow Jump Seat to Elaine's page. She's a phenomenal spiritual teacher herself. Question number two. Tonight is Center of Light Possibilities, 20 questions. What is the relationship between science and religion? What a good question. The relationship, I'm multitasking, forgive me, between science and religion is called a heaven on earth marriage. Here comes Keith in the baby carriage. We all know the little jingle, right? Science, earth, religion, that's earth, but let's replace religion with spirituality. Spirituality and science all have the same goal, means to the same end the truth, spirituality, science, heaven on the earth, heaven on earth, heaven on earth. Being nailed to the cross, some part of you has to die and be resurrected. Heaven on earth, and they intersect right here. This is the marriage of science and spirituality. And guess who the child is? It's us. Science is doing everything it can, exponentially in fact, to explain through math mathematics and God, quantum mechanical field, the unified field we call God, to explain the all of it, the absolution of things. We're not there yet as far as science goes. We're not there as far as spiritual science goes either. But we're getting there. So where is the there we're trying to get to? Well, in regard to spiritualists, we will understand that there is no there. And scientists will have their reward when they realize the there they're trying to get to is actually here. Science has a very myopic vision capacity in many areas but in many other areas many scientists themselves are beginning to postulate understand meditate on the enigma of god they have already always have that's why they explore the quantum mechanical unified field they just don't use the term god so they already get it but now they're moving into the mysticism of God versus coming from a clinical scientific point of view. They get the scientific point of view already because they're scientists. Now they're wanting to understand something a little more subtle, a little more causal, a little more spiritual. Like, okay, I get this in the form of mathematics, but how many equations do I have to write out in the form of a formula to logically, logistically get it. They're done with that. Their brain's hurting. So what they do, they allow their heart to take the mission, which is, oh my God, it's the same as the mathematics or the theory I pose, but I'm so much more fulfilled. That's the marriage that is happening between science and spirituality. Moving forth, question number three. We got 20 of these. Welcome to Center of Light. Number three is why, or phenomenal question, very deserving question. Why are so many people depressed? If you are here with me, within listening shot, not only of my voice, but my heart and my time with you. If you happen to be such a one who is depressed, I'm gonna tell you how to get out of your depression, just like that. Now I know there are bodily components to it, which is a lack of vitamin D, so forth, sunlight, 
vitamin C, so forth, sunlight. But this is all driven by the innermost workings of the innermost being of your innermost self. Okay? If you have any form of depression, from the smallest to being full-blown, I will help you to become full-grown. I am not trying to be flippant, nor am I trying to flip it off with your precious, sacred situation. It becomes a choice. Well, Keith, you don't understand what it feels like to be me. Yes, I do. I lived it for two years. Well, give me the courtesy for living it for two years. Okay. You already have that courtesy. You don't need my permission. I'm sharing with you that you don't need two years or whatever it takes. You just need to make the choice. I don't feel like getting up today. I'm just lethargic and depressed. I want to eat and feel bad. Guess what? You feel lethargic today. You eat and feel bad. That's up to you. Could it possibly be, possibly be as simple as standing up and erecting yourself to say, I'm making another choice. Fake it till you make it. If that applies here, use it. People are depressed because they have been pressed upon. In fact, the word, the actual correct word to use is, here's a button. They don't call it pressing a button. They call it, you depress the button. Look it up. You depress a button. So your button has been depressed because of the models that we have been given by society, familial, social, governmental, religious, peer pressure, and we bought into it. And we sought to find ourselves into it. And in so doing, we bind ourselves into it. If you are depressed, understand that your depression is your own anger turned inward towards attacking yourself. So maybe, just maybe, in some arena, some way possible, depending on who you are, that fibromyalgia or autoimmune deficiencies or problems is the self attacking the self. It's exactly what it is. Look it up. Look it in. Look it forward. Look it toward a new possibility. Tonight is center of light possibilities. Why are you attacking yourself? Stop attacking yourself and the depression will lift. So you don't have to end your depression. You just simply have to begin to find where you are oppressing yourself and it will lift. You get my drift? You have to love yourself before you can come out of the hole. And when you love yourself, you will become whole and whole you will become. Question number three. Phenomenal question, I love it. Excuse me, question number four. What are we all so afraid of? What do you think you're afraid of? Do I need to tell you? Keith, I'm afraid of dogs. I'm afraid of people. I'm afraid of trusting someone. No, you're not. Whatever it is, you're afraid of yourself. Uh, Carolyn Ronaldo says, does it start with shame and guilt? Well, absolutely. Where else can it go from shame and guilt? Only to more shame and guilt and blame and game and shame and all those things. Carolyn, what a great, great question. Shame and guilt. If we truly believed that we were as pure as we actually are, none of this would ever come about. Because that means everyone is taking responsibility. And everyone is living in civility. When everyone takes responsibility, world peace 
happens just like that. Just like that. In a story. In the acceptance of everyone as they are and accepting ourselves as we are, the door to infinite possibility simply says, congratulations, we knew you would make it. What is it that everyone is so afraid of? We are afraid of our own power, says Marion Williamson. Because in past experiences, our power has got us in trouble. We used opportunities incorrectly. And we felt the karmic backlash of that. And so now we're scared to be ourselves fully when before we were full of not ourselves, but full of I got to watch my words and I love words because they're powerful. Bullshit. We're full of bullshit. Here's my sensory. What am I afraid of, Keith? Why did I hold back? I didn't hold back. Bullshit. We're afraid of our own bullshit. So that being said, let's polish that turd. Make it a quality fertilizer so we can grow new possibilities. Center of light possibilities tonight. 20 questions. We're afraid of ourselves. Question number five. These questions are phenomenal. When is war justifiable? <laughs> Callan Ronaldo says all this shadow work sucks. I hear you. Callan, if I may. So likewise, just I can help you alleviate that if that's something you're interested in or anyone. How to alleviate the pain, sy symptom the symptoms of shadow work because it, you have to die. I went through, through some shadow work. My social media crashed. Part of me died. Knowingly, ongoingly as a teacher. How to alleviate your shadow work. There is no such thing as shadow work. Shadow work implies shadow, dark, dark, dark night of the soul because it comes from a level of pain that I went in for two years that I offered you a way out when you were depressed. Why are we so afraid of, what are we so afraid of, so forth, suffering, question number one, all that. It's all the same stuff on an even playing field. There is no shadow work. It is a task that I take not on, but within myself joyfully, because I know what not what awaits, what I am is this is a beautiful tool to say how much spirit loves me. Because without my recent descent into hell, well, I would have set for another spell, the same everyday functionality. But through this, I had to do some illuminating of what I would have called shadow work. So now that I'm on this side of it, it's not shadow work. It's become lightened, enlightened, no longer being frightened. I understand the term, but the connotation is hard for any of us to shake. Shadow work, it's dark. Dark means dark night of the soul. Dark night of the soul means pain and suffering. Not me. So, I understand. We may within ourselves say, ah, I got some shadow work to do. Maybe myself and Carolyn are hanging out in a restaurant or bar having some drinks and some food and we talk about our shadow work. How's your shadow work going, dear? Well, Keith, how's your going? And so we understand the term because it's just a term to make a point. But when it goes beyond that point, and someone insists in living on the point that sticks them straight up the wazoo or straight up the ass, that point gets uncomfortable. So maybe we can all see it no longer as shadow work. We're not shadow workers. We're light workers. So there is no shadow. If you are a light worker, there is no shadow work. If you are a light worker, there is no shadow work. If you are a light worker, there is no shadow work. 
So maybe you can toss that idea around with your tribe who gets that you mean a little something, something about what you've been doing with yourself lately. But in pseudo-spirituality for me, that word is not a part of my dialogue. Doesn't make me better. I'm concerned about vibration and refinement. Refinement. Thank you, Carolyn, for the beautiful, beautiful possible question and everything that is contained within it. Carolyn says, self-love has to be learned. Absolutely. Elaine says, I will not change one experience. All is a gift as all is love. Claudia says, number five, answer. It moved quickly. One moment. Number five, answer, never. I don't know what number five is. Let me review Ah, so I overshot my target. Answer to number five, when is war justifiable? Never. I agree with her. Never. That's on a spiritual plateau. Never. When is war justifiable? It is never justifiable. We are light workers. Now, that being said, someone breaks into your house. Uh-uh. You didn't. I'm about to bust out some water on your ass. I'm about, about to drop a freaking nuclear bomb on your ass because you broke into my house. So are we still going to say never? Maybe we can do that never a little more subtly by locking the doors of our house. Is that somewhat a war tactic in and of itself to create separation? So there are checks and balances. On a spiritual plateau, when we are living in this level of light, it's never justifiable. But we are humans who are moving towards the light. And there are unconscious past deeds that has brought on said war in nations, said war in your house as to why you have to drop a bomb on somebody who's breaking through your window doesn't justify the war but we do have the birthright for the battle doesn't justify that you went unconscious because you did leave your door unlocked or you put locks on your door or you carry a gun all creates karma to bring back to you the reason why you did or didn't do said things War is never justifiable. Doing things from a position or a platform of truly being right, I don't mean right and wrong, I mean right in a form of balance for the highest good of all involved, even in case you have to kill someone for breaking into your house to protect your children, that's called being right. I don't mean ego egoistically or arrogantly. I'm being in a state of balance that you become now a light warrior than a light worker. So the big question becomes, how do I know the difference? Here's your big answer. You don't. You will never know the difference until you have been summoned in that way. Sometimes you see people fighting on the street. You let it be. You just walk by and go, that's crazy. But sometimes something inside of you engages and says, in fact, you don't have a choice in the matter. You can't sit there and think about when you're going to choose to engage or not. The decision has already been made as to why you find yourself motivating towards the fight or the brawl to stand between all of them who are doing it. That's a very, very teeter-totter question. War in the sense of killing for the sake of oil, money, this, greed, that, other. It's never justifiable. Americans and people of the like did die for freedom. Many under, under erroneous guises of what we thought they, not they, meaning the military, soldiers who've died believing something. 
when it all became about deceiving something. So war is really never justifiable until it becomes, until it comes to your door. But overall, I understand. There's no point of going to Iran or Iraq and dropping helicopter, black helicopter, Apache helicopters and freaking drones and stealth bombers and just annihilating races of people. Never. Never. No one can ever be clever to justify that freaking nonsense. Take a short pause. Tonight is Center of Light Possibilities. 20 questions I got on Google today. I've done a show on every possible topic. I'm always open to anything you may offer as a subject that I can present. I love what I do. I love what I do. And I love being with you, mostly. As to why I do those things that I love what I do. But I'm going to take a short pause. going to be right back. Tonight is soon of like 20 questions. I got on Google today and looked up 20 spiritual topics. And I found 20, 20 topics for the aspiring spirituals. Um, let's see what's happening. Elaine says, I have been in experiences in this life where my life was on the line. I chose love many times. Phenomenal that you are in that spiritual power, girl. Fantastic. Fantastic. I now live in a fearless heart. Wow. Again, everyone, jump seat to Elaine Leonard. Watch your teachings. <laughs> you want to see what the heart looks like? She'll show it to you right there. She wears it on the sleeve. Give me right back. Round two. We are on question number six. Uh, again, I'm somewhat limited as a way of saying, which I'm not. Share this where you can, where you will. Be right back. I'm going to play some beautiful lavender soul. Check on my beautiful kitty cat. Uh, why not divine lover? It's really what we are. What we want. It's what we are. We're looking to reach back to our parent. Your parents kicked you out of the tree, kicked you out of the nest, kicked you out of the house. So you felt that separation, right? I know you did. You know how I know you did? Because I'm just like you and I felt the same thing. But you become a parent yourself. And in becoming that parent yourself, it becomes apparent to you why your parent did what they did to you. Because in the great wisdom of your parent and parents, they shared it down through the lineage with you so you can continue <laughs> the blessing. No one's missing a boot. I'll see you shortly. Be right back. Question number six and number seven all the way to 20. I'm going to pick up my gate. I'll see you shortly. <laughs> I'm having a blast. I will be with you all. You will never be alone. I am. All of my life, all of my days, I feel you there. Days. I've seen places far away Wondering just where Time and again I have come to Just where time and again Do 
that you know me. I will not hide my love from you. You create your reality and every moment by your own perceptions, your judgments, actions. Peace is a state of mind. Bliss is a state of heart. Heaven is a state of being. Deep in my heart, I know you're there. I can always feel you. Guiding my life to see the light that will lead me to the truth. Welcome back to Center of Light tonight, a Center of Light Possibilities. Answering 20 questions, basic questions from the internet about how to be a spiritual seeker. What are the first questions that are likely to come up? Very powerful questions, mind you. <clears throat> number six, question number six. Great question. How would God want us to respond to aggression and terrorism? Great question in it. How would God want us to respond to aggression and terrorism? What do you think the answer to that is? I'll give you a moment to chew on it. You don't. Like the, sec the question we had just a second ago, before the break, with war, terrorism, not terrorism, what's the question we had before? Um, yes, uh, one second, let me look. When is war justifiable? Same question. You don't. Until you have to. So a spiritual light worker is the same as a spiritual warrior. Do you think Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and all these Jedi's want to go around swiping people with these freaking lightsabers, lightsabers cutting down sentient beings from around the galaxy? Do you think that's what they want to do? And they don't until they have to. So God does not want you, I can't speak for God, I'm just telling you I know spiritual law. Don't go around using pulling out your lightsaber just to cut around, cut things everywhere you can just because you can't. It's not about the aggression, it's about the passivity, passivity of it to where you know when it's time to be full out a light worker, light warrior. It's never about aggression. I had a psychologist many years ago tell me, Keith, imagine you have a friend that is doing some foolish things. And he got in your space. And you decide to slap him across his face. Not good. Same friend, different scenario. You slap him across his face because you love him. And that needs to take place. It's a total different experience. It's not aggression. It's not abuse. 
Like when your parents kicks you out of the nest? It's love. Wake up, my friend. Wake up. It's the same gesture as throwing water on someone's face who passed out. It's not about the slap or the connection of a hand to a face. It's about a connection from heart to heart. In that, you shall never part. So therefore, it changes the dynamic. That was number six. Number seven. Let's see where we are. How does one obtain true peace? Beautiful question. You don't. Peace is not something you obtain. I understand the question and where it takes us to. Well, I'm curious about how do I get peace? I get that. So my answer to that is you don't attain, obtain true peace. You are the truth. And in your essence, you are peaceful. So in this realization, what it does, it puts a self-responsibility back on the individual to say, So what I need to do, question mark, is remove all the extraneous stuff that is keeping me from my infinite possibility and my essence. And the answer is absolutely. You don't achieve peace by moving toward or forward something that you think is going to bring it to you, even yourself, because you will never find yourself in the future. You can only find yourself in the moment. Because the future you that you're trying to be <clears throat> will always flee from thee. Because you're looking for something that is not ye. The ye you are looking for is the me in this moment. So it puts you right back into check again. Well, I'm not happy in this moment. I understand. Congratulations that you see that. Now it move, remove the extraneous stuff and eventually you will see that eventually you will free that and soon enough you will free that peace is not something you find peace is something you choose win or lose love song of the blues ratty or new shoes it's up to all of yous <clears throat> next question great question I love these questions my god they're resonating in me Question number eight. <laughs> I didn't read these questions, so I'm reading in the moment. What does it mean to live in the present moment? It means you will find true peace. <laughs> if you live in the present moment, you will find yourself that you keep looking for beyond yourself. How can you find yourself presently if you keep looking beyond yourself presently and pastly? And lastly, you will come to find that it is you here in this moment. So you may not like who you are in this moment. Grant it. Slant it how you want. The reason you keep looking for your better possibility in the future is because you don't like yourself in this moment. And you will use any suture because there are many open wounds and salt is being poured so you don't like yourself so you project yourself to a not real future as the creator of your life in this moment because you're hoping for greater possibility that's gorgeous that's delicious that's like putting some salt on your shot of tequila right i love the tequila but a little bit of salt is great but if you don't like salt it begins to burn so you project towards the future How do you get to the present moment? You stop the nonsense. The future is nonsense. The past is nonsense. You lose sight of the present, which is sensical. It requires all of your senses to be in yourself, sensefully, to be powerfully, to be able to deliver without a quiver. Let's move to the next question. So what does it mean to, again, back to the question before I move on. What does it mean to live in the present moment? 
it means everything you have been looking for. Looking for, implying the future. I'm looking for something to the future. Stop looking. Look in the mirror and you will see forever clearer the most important thing in the universe. That sounds like blasphemy. Good. Go do the work surrounding that blasphemic statement and you will find yourself. When you look in the mirror and see the most beautiful thing that has ever been created in the universe throughout infinity and you begin to believe that to the level of infinity, you will achieve and receive that. That's what it means to be in the present moment. <clears throat> the next question. Love these questions. My God, they're delicious. What is our greatest distraction? This out here. Let me ask that question again and give you a different answer. Same answer, differently. What is our greatest distraction? And I said this out here. This out here only exists because the greatest distraction is this in here. Do you hear me in this? The greatest distraction is believing that a past or future exists. Because for many people, their future possibility is hammering over their past, expecting something to get better. Other people are living in the future, expecting to get out of self-quandary in the present moment, expecting it to get better, but they don't realize they've been living in the past. It will never get better. Let me kick you in your ass. It will never get better. Never. Bad affirmation? No, it's not. It's a beautiful possibility. It will never get better until you want better. And you will only find better when you better yourself right here, right now. Holy cow, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. Next question. What, so back again, recapping what is the distraction? Ignorance. Question number 10. Is current religion serving its purpose? What's up, Carl Laparou? Carl, please send me a friend request, bruh. Is religion serving its purpose? I can't answer that for anyone. So I'm kicking the question back to you. Is your religion serving its purpose? I will expound on, of course, everyone wants, if you follow a religious path, one in particular, or one, one only, your answer is immediately going to be, oh yes, I do. Mine is perfect. It's great. But what I would like to for you to ask yourself is, following this model, this way, this path, is it truly a path? It will only become a true path when all you feel following said path is endless joy. Whatever part of this dogma, walk, talk, creed, love, bleed about said religion that you may follow that does not bring you joy, it is not serving its purpose because the word purpose in and of itself means you are living a purpose on purpose for the capital T-H-E-E -E, purpose so if you're not living the purpose in any said religion walk, talk, doctrine, code, creed, sect that fear has infiltrated you have become, honestly, we become betrayers of said faith. Because the doctrine 
and the truth and the script, the divine script has already been etched on your heart forever is that you are a child soon to be parent and it should be a parent of the living God invincible no war no more anything that is shy of that should be should literally should be brought before the courts of the highest order wow anything that falls short of that you are a child of the living god that is a belief of any of ours should be brought before the court of the highest order so the actual quote judge which there isn't judge meaning unconditional love to say this is nonsense and folly you will never find your jolly in this bullshit that was a great question next question <laughs> I love it the next question posed 20 questions for the spiritual aspirant center of light possibilities oh my god god is moving through my vessel and through yours as well because when i ask this question post this question it doesn't require a response if you start thinking of an answer, you've missed the actual answer. Here's a great question. Wow. It is so simple and powerful. <laughs> Let me see what question I'm on. I might make this a cliffhanger. No, I won't. The next question in the lot, as they say across the pond in England, what happens after you die? Ask yourself that question. Don't, on purpose, <laughs> pun intended, don't come up with an answer. What happens after you die? Just ask that question of yourself and keep it open-ended. What happens after I die? And wait. What happens after I die? Phenomenal question. Which beckons another, better, bigger, infused phenomenal question which is what is happening while you are alive so to answer the question what happens when you die better is the question what is happening to you while you are alive until you understand that you will never understand nor grasp or integrate the divine plan the grand plan of what can ever befall you befail you raise you up lift you or drift you into the cosmic sea of infinite possibility to you understand the truth of what is happening to you while you are alive no one can ever express or explain to you what happens to you when you die you can only become self-realized to understand the reasons why when you understand what happens to you while you're alive what are you choosing what are you winning what are you losing what are you massaging and what are you bruising the greater question is what is happening to you while you're alive? The answer to that question is you understand what happens to you when you die.
Next question. Describe heaven and how to get there. Heaven is here. How to get there, which is here. So hear me. Heaven is here. So to get there, which is here, you have to hear me. How do you get to heaven? So in other words, how do I get there? You don't get there. Stop the pseudo-spirituality. You will never, ever, ever, never, 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 ever, ever get to heaven. Never. It's impossible. You can never get to heaven. What does that mean? It means because you're already in it. So it's not a place you need to get to. It's a place that you, a space that you need to see as you. So you can't get there until you realize who you are here. And when you realize who you are there, then you will actually get there. Do you see? It's not hard. Heaven is not a place you're trying to reach. This was one of the questions I answered earlier before. You can't reach joy. You can't reach peace. It is the very foundation and the fabric of everything of energy that holds you together to, to exist. So it's not a place that you need to be at 8 o'clock tonight. Don't be late. It's eternal. Don't be late. Next question. I love this. This is so fun. What is the meaning of life? Ask yourself that question. Is it your religion? Is it your children? Is it a combination of all those things? Is it a means to an end, a nine to five grind? What are you trying to find? Do you feel found or blind? What is the meaning of life? I can't answer that for you, but I will answer that for you. And there's no way around the answer I'm going to give you, which there's no one can answer that for you, but I'm going to give you the way. It's the meaning you give it. There is nothing else. I came here for a vacation. Congratulations. There's your meaning of life. I came here to be of service. Congratulations, there's a meaning of your life. I came here to resist the man. Congratulations, there's a meaning of your life. That's the meaning of life. Play the game fairly, correctly, don't cheat. That's the objective. Next question. Describe God. Describe God. You describe God. <laughs> In fact, I won't try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to glaze right over this question. I could, and I will. Love, peace, awareness, infinite. But I'm going to go over this question and just simply let it slip by because... Even though there is no blasphemy, trying to describe the infinite is an impossibility. So I won't do it. I would rather be congruent with center of light tonight, center of light possibility, by simply asking an open-ended question. What is God? Many people think God is the it of its all name. That is limitation. God is a word that describes the absolution of the universe. It's not its name. So I'm going to lay right over that question and take a short pause. Going to be back with the final question. So tonight is Center of Light Possibilities. 20 questions for the aspiring spirituals. Phenomenal questions. Someone actually not thought this out, but felt this out. And I'm loving it. Going to be right back. Uh, how about Center of Light? Just to know you're there. Lavender Soul. Again, reminder, Christmas special. Um, 
Let me grab the link. Central of Light Christmas Special. Buy one book of Homecoming Crossing the Bridge to the Soul, my new release. I will send you the first Lavender Soul album for free online. Two Homecomings. I will send you sec two albums. Three Homecomings. I will send you all three albums. The information is in this forum. Send me an email, uh, email at keithanthonyblanchard at gmail.com. Let me know if you purchase. I will send you some books and some music, and they make great Christmas gifts. See you shortly.
I'm going to change the music. Why? Because I can. And I have some really cool stuff. Uh, let's see what it is that I want. I want to acknowledge Trisha Perkins. And I'm going to wait for the answer. Trisha, if you would, did you ask that question? Because it's a question you really want to know an answer to. If that is true, say, just send me a yes. And if you're asking because you're just trying to stimulate thought for a good presentation, just say no. I'm going to wait. I think I already know ah, the answer to what you're going to pose. But. So, Trisha, does that is something you're truly concerned about or are you just trying to stimulate thought? If it is something you want to know, send me a yes. She says, yes, I want to know. Trisha, I appreciate your bravery and your courage because I am going to address it as such. This is not about singling or calling you out. This is about raising you up as an example, exemplary for, exemplary for other people. So thank you for your courage. She asked a question, a powerful question. And so Trisha, because this is a question that you really want to know the answer to. Your liberation lies into the answer I'm going to deliver to you. You should be jumping up and down. And everyone else should be jumping up and down if you say, share the same model. Or if you don't, but you should be jumping up and down for her. Center of light possibility. And right now, it is Trisha's grand, grandest possibility. She posed the question... If one does not reach enlightenment, with, will their spirit be eternally dead and separate from source? You can never be separate from source or you couldn't exist. It would be arrogant or egoistic to think that we could. I say that only to let you know that your question in this way beautifully is erroneous now that you can see. Because if you can never be separate from source, how can you ever be eternally dead? That being said, here's your spiritual manner or your spiritual bread. Lay on your spiritual bed and take in this is sensuality, this sexuality with your lover, with divine parent, which is. You can never be eternally dead. It brings us all back to the present moment of our own buffoonery to ever entertain the possibility. Can I be separate from source? So you can't. But to even go as far as to ask the question, could I be eternally dead? A person who is eternally dead is in the moment not living fully. When we begin to live fully, fully we begin to live. And we connect to the very source that we thought before that we were separate from. Congratulations to you, Tricia. You have opened up a possibility within yourself by being brave and courageous. Trust me when I tell you, this level of spirituality will be contagious, advantageous to you. You can never separate yourself from source, but the mind will sure do what it wants and everything it can to see to it that it happens. 
or at least that you believe it. So erroneously, we believe it. Get out of your folly, move into your jolly. So now that you know that you can never be separate from God, you can't. It's physically, scientifically, spiritually impossible. Ah, the alleviation begins to happen. Oh my God, I am safe. Yes, you have never not been safe until we choose to never not be safe. There's your grace. What's up, Brother Andy? So, Tricia, be happy, be joyful, be loving. Be you full out and full in, and you will win. Next question. Tonight is Center of Light Possibilities. 20 questions. What, <laughs> what is the greatest quality of a human possesses? Love, compassion, wanting something greater, nobility. She says, I'm still learning and just wondering. Sweetheart, you are doing phenomenal. I love you. I want nothing for you except for you to be joyful. You're not learning. You're not learning at all. I'm going to argue with you. You ain't learning squat. You are remembering. Remembering. I'm going to remember myself to the Cosmic Society. Thanksgiving to you. All right, next question. Um, the greatest qualities humans possess, peace, love, joy, honesty, nobility, clarity, allowance, acceptance, appreciation, striving inwardly for something greater, always seeking, always eking out that which means anything at all. Yes, Andy, remember. Next question. What is it that prevents people from living in their full potential? Fear, jealousy, insecurity, ignorance, misunderstanding, so forth and so on. Arrogance, all those things. Number 17, what is that word? Noverbally, I don't know if that's a word. I got this from the internet. By motion or gesture, act out what you believe to be the current condition of the world. We talked about that earlier, that the current condition of the world is the truth. It's not, it always keeps you aloof from the infinite possibility, which is you graduating, as we just talked about, Tricia into the beautiful expression of the truth which is you but also the you that you see in the reflection of the mirror it can't get any clearer or dearer or nearer to you than that number 18 what is your one wish for the world Claudia says kindness and that is the umbrella that oversees everything else so you'd have to come up with all these answers. Kindness includes and is imbued with all of that. Fantastic. My brother Andy says, for real though, so many are worried about mortality. So I think it is a great understanding for, for folks to have for themselves. Someone asked me many years ago when 9-11 happened, I played music that very night. We should go get them sons of bitches and do this. Don't you think, don't you think, don't you think? And I said, this is not about the survival of my body. Here you go, Andy. This is about the evolution of my soul. Likewise. So let me continue with this question, which is, acting out the current condition of the world. Stop acting out. Stop acting, in fact. Stop acting, in facting. Be yourself. 
There is no acting out in the world. You can. That is your choice. How does it feel you to be a you in acting out in the world? Just be yourself. Next question. Number 19. What is wisdom and how do we gain it? What is wisdom? Let's pick that apart in its wholeness. Joy, bliss, purpose, unpointness, sincerity, passion, humility, vulnerability, civility. This is what wisdom looks like. Inspiration, elation. Of these qualities what is wisdom wisdom is that which is joy which is always evidence of the presence of God in the story in fact if we you, you end your story of telling long-winded stories or few future possible stories about what you think your life should be and or look like when you stop the nonsense wisdom through the silence simply appears. So what is wisdom? You have to shut your mouth and your mind and everything else if you don't mind to ever glean it, to ever gain it, to ever have seen it, to ever explain it to anybody else. There is nothing else. Wisdom is that which holds your corporeal self together so you can walk around in this meat suit and eke out your nine to five job. That is wisdom. Do you understand? You will stand under something greater in the form of divine wisdom when you seek in, not seek out, the truth. How do I find the truth? Fantastic question. What is the absolute truth, Mr. Spiritual Teacher Keith Yanava, man, person, guru? Good question, man. Go look in the mirror. No one can ever share with you anything ever clearer or any dearer than what you see as the grace that you see as your face. Until you see that, you will never see that which is the wisdom that can ever come through you. Go look in the mirror. Tell yourself that you love yourself. And pay attention to the who responds. That's wisdom. Wisdom is not just words someone tells you. Wisdom are those words in action. And finally... Question number 20. Center of light possibility. Are we all one? I can say yeah. And that is true. And everybody else who comes across this presentation too will say, well yeah, I understand that energy can never be created nor destroyed. So everything is energy exchanging within itself, moving at God's speed to somewhere else. That is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Do you actually believe that? Well, yeah, Keith, I believe that everything is of one energy because do you actually conceive, believe, and are able to receive that and retrieve that which belongs to you? So the question number 21 out of 20 questions, the 21 question is, do you believe that? When you truly believe that, then you will no longer ask such a question. In hindsight, foolish question, are we all one? Pretty easy, isn't it? It's never been hard. 
never be hard on yourself. So the question 22 becomes, why have you been so hard on yourself? There is nothing else. Nothing else will alleviate your woes, your wounds, and your concerns. So what are you saying, Keith? I am asking you a very simple question. And I don't mean your parents. It should be apparent when you ask yourself this question which is number 23. Where do I come from? 24. Yes. Who am I now? And 25. Two and seven is, two and five is seven. Here's your ticket to heaven, which we talked about earlier. Where am I going? You are not going anywhere except further to this present moment. Be present with this moment and I swear to you, you will find yourself. God bless you beyond measure.